Hi, we are here at the 50 yards line and we are 50 yards away from the targets. From here, we're going to shoot 50 yards away at the targets. How far are the targets? 50 yards. Hit. Here's to you, dear viewer. I appreciate you watching another episode of The Gear Locker, even though you didn't have to. August of last year, I purchased a Swamp Fox Arrowhead LPVO, specifically the 1 to 6 variant, for just over $300. At the time, its brother, the Tomahawk, ran slightly cheaper and didn't boast the Arrowhead's feature set, such as reticle variety and locking turret system, nor the Arrowhead's field of view. Keep in mind, these are both second focal plane optics. If you don't know what that means, I'm not going to pretend like I did last August and just explain it in simple terms. There are at least four important pieces of glass in your optic. From nose to tail, they are the objective lens, first focal plane, second focal plane, and ocular lens. The reticle will be etched onto either the first or second focal plane. If the reticle is etched on the first focal plane, the most crucial difference will be that when you change the magnification of your optic, the reticle will change with it. This allows the reticle to have much more trajectory data displayed, and said data will be usable at any magnification level. Primarily, this feature is used by hunters and rich people. If the reticle is etched on the second focal plane, it will not vary in size as you move through the magnification levels. Through some magic in physics, the center will always be the center, but any kind of BDC will only be usable at the highest magnification setting. If you're a shooter who primarily keeps the optic at one and sometimes pushes up the magnification for challenge targets, there's nothing wrong with this option. That was all on 3X? No, that was one. That was just one, nice. Yeah, and then 3X really clears out, you know, what you're, what you're aiming at. Having said that last declarative statement, I do declare that I fall into the latter camp. Swamp Fox interested me as a budget-friendly up-and-comer in the optics market, and I made the determination that a second focal plane would benefit me more in practice, so it all lined up. I would love to make this all about the arrowhead. I really would. But in the world of veritable optic solutions, there is another. Another method entirely, completely independent, and with its own long, boring list of pros and cons. The method is the magnifier. Red dots are extremely popular. A red dot can perform at impressive ranges and provide some of the quickest and most precise target acquisition within 50 yards. That, that just, yeah. What's that hold like? Pretty high, like a foot. <laughs> I'd estimate a foot. For those of us shooting 5.56, which more often than not is most of us in the free world, with a fair bit of practice, you can reach out to three or 400 yards by knowing your holds. That high? And as far as affordability and durability, it's hard to go wrong. Things only start changing when the desire is there to be truly versatile. Essentially, the red dot represents a perfect point of aim without any of the implications of lining up a rear and forward sight. But still, the red dot provides no ability on its own to magnify the target. What difference does it make if you have your zero, holdover, and trigger press absolutely perfect if you can't identify the target through your unmagnified glass? How can you stretch out a bit more use from your simple red dot? by adding a couple more pieces of glass behind that unmagnified glass, of course. Magnifiers such as this Juliet 3 Micro by SIG can be described in the simplest way as a low power scope without a reticle that you can flip sideways when you don't need it. It also makes for a handy monocular if you were to rip it off your rifle and hand it to your impromptu spotter. Three power magnification seems to be the most popular but I've seen them go up to five or even six times. In this way, a magnifier represents force multiplication, allowing you to be more effective at range and not affecting your close quarters abilities, unless you consider a slightly heavy growth hanging off the side of your rifle cumbersome. Point is, your red dot, while not being modified or changed in any way, can extend its own effectiveness with the addition of a magnifier. 
but it's not quite that simple. You see, the minute you step into the realm of magnification, you step out of the realm of dirt simple aiming habits that Red Dots have trained us into. Okay. All right, let's start this again. Double taps, both of them. I think I got one mic, but 223. When shooting with a red dot, there are several luxuries that a lot of us start taking for granted. The biggest luxury is the lack of an eye box. See, the red dot reticle can be used with your eye in pretty much any position, so long as you can see it. Ah, well, that happened. I could flip the magnifier off and then just shoot at them and it worked. No, no need to adjust. When making the jump to magnified optics, shooters who are wholly used to red dot shooting will have a learning curve to overcome with figuring out the eye box. If you've never shot with a scope, and I'm sure there are a few of you out there, don't be ashamed. That specific area you have to put your eye is known as the eye box. When you move your eye around the wrong way behind a scope, you'll experience shadowing or lose the objective entirely. Most dynamic scopes, such as this arrowhead, have a fairly forgiving eye relief, which is a term for how far away from the ocular lens your eye has to be. Go ahead and use those two interchangeably. Nobody cares. Since generally the power of the optic doesn't go all that high. But when you start bumping the power factor up, you have to dial in your head slash eye position a lot tighter. Typically, training with a dedicated scope will give you the habit of knowing and naturally falling into this position. Since while between 1 and 6x, the eye box shifts slightly, it definitely shifts less dramatically than when going from a red dot to flipping the magnifier down. You just go, you see yourself as you're pulling the trigger, you see it just kind of walk off a little and you're like, ah. Oh. It's physically the difference between having a fixed ocular lens with an LPVO and one that suddenly appears three to four inches in front of the red dot. The latter makes you adjust your shooting position significantly, whereas the former while more strict at one times, is more consistent across all magnification levels. Whereas my head position with the red dot is completely viable back here or here, wherever I feel like I need to be to be stable. Now when I magnify, there is basically the tiniest of exit pupils visible in the center and the rest is shadow. This is more, right here I get the full field of view. And if you could see my neck, you'd see how uncomfortable that is. I found that the 13 inch A1 length of pull, such as on this KP-15, gives me the nicest sweet spot between comfort shooting the dot alone and inching my head up just a little bit to get a nice presentation through the magnifier. As I've said, pushing the LPVO up in power is going to change the dimensions of the eye box, but not so much that you really notice it anywhere but subconsciously. This means you'll be able to slide through the full range of magnification pretty smoothly. Which brings me to my next point about the magnifier. On paper, it gives you the best of both worlds, since you're probably not going to be using the magnifier until you really need it. 30 rounds go so fast. But what if you either wanted more than the fixed magnification or perhaps a little less? I'm not going to pretend that any of us are such experienced high tier operators that we die on the hill of using 2x over 3x in any given situation, nor will I make the claim that 3.5 or 4x is so much more useful on the range than 3x. But in any event where you did want an incremental increase or decrease in magnification, you're going to be down the brown river with the magnifier combo. In practice, most any shooter well practiced and experienced enough will make do with any situation. As I said earlier, it's entirely feasible to make hits at 400 yards with a red dot alone from a stable shooting position. However, again, talking about luxuries or contextual scenarios, both of those are aided by the LPVO's ability to slide through its power range with ease. Most of the shooting I do on the regular is at 1x, and with a pretty damn decent piece of kit such as the Arrowhead, 1x will get you a good ways. There we go, 232. There are, however, times where I want that little bit extra, and to be honest, generally 3x is that sweet spot. In that respect, the magnifier represents a good alternative. Facing up against what I'll call challenge targets, though, 
you'll often want the luxury of kicking that glass up to its highest power setting so you can really, truly dial in the hold. Now, there's a big, funny-named elephant in the room when discussing the efficacy of these kinds of optics, and that elephant is named astigmatism. I've always felt a tinge of it in my shooting. Most all red dots I've used have been fairly sharp, with a tiny bit of added flares usually biasing towards the top. Nothing to get me down. This changed, though, when I experienced the 3x magnification. The dot would shift from an exaggerated version of its former prickly self to some bizarre trifecta of confusion, and as I moved my eye around, it would warp into different, hardly usable shapes. This was still acceptable enough to make decent hits on steel at distance, but very precise shooting was vague and confusing. Playing with the diopter only corrected this so much. At the end of the day, the issue is in my eyes. If you're familiar with a red dot, you're probably familiar with the idea that as you crank it up more, you start to get more and more of the emitter shadow like around the glass. But the thing I was complaining about earlier, where it like starts to look spotty when it's lower, like you're, there may be dust on the emitter or something, basically clears up, but it is still a single dot, just with a little bit of the flare from the overbrightened emitter. So now that most of the day is gone, let's look at these two exact examples and nudge ever closer to my uninformed, unsolicited opinion on the matter. The Swamp Fox Arrowhead has plenty to offer, and if you are set on diving into an LPVO, this would make a great one to start with. The illuminated reticle stands out well enough against most forms of daylight besides direct sun. The locking turrets can be removed to reset the zero, making it easier to fine-tune it for specific field adjustments. All the moving parts feel firm in the good kind of way, and fitment and finish are superb. The glass is clear, the field of view is incredible. I guess I should also mention I'm using Aero Precision's ultralight cantilever mount, itself about 60 bucks. And maybe I'm just bad at things, but I noticed when torquing down the rings, it would transfer that rotation to the scope. All I needed to do was figure out how off from center it was when the rings were torqued, and make the adjustment in the opposite way before tightening them, and bada bing! At times while zeroing, the turrets felt like they didn't want to fall back in place where I clicked them. Wiggling them to the nearest half MOA click point worked. Pretty much like how I mounted and leveled the scope, if you squint, it's mint. You can still get incredibly cheaper options with their own mounts, but I have no experience with them. And to quote the great Shep Proudfoot, don't know them, don't vouch for them. Back to the MSR and Juliet 3 Micro. I have less practical experience with this, but with what little I have, I can be certain the iBox is punishing for this magnifier. If you plan on running this, get comfortable with a shorter length of pull, and if you can survive it, no backup sights. Ready? Yep. Moving it back those couple extra slots makes a big difference for the eye relief. The reason this is important to me is because of the polarizing nature of running the red dot and then switching to the magnifier. In theory, if you plan this system around only using the magnifier in certain conditions, you'll be fine keeping this in mind. After all, a red dot alone is pretty viable for a decent range. And if you're in a good shooting position, or you've got your stock length dialed in, flipping it down will disorient you less and less as you practice. The Shakespearean duo might be the subject of this lecture, but it's worth noting that the Sig Romeo MSR by itself is a very good red dot to grab if you can't justify spending a month's worth of training ammo on a piece of aluminum with an LED in it. You can get this thing for under a hundred dollars. Its field of view isn't incredible, but it's a pretty stout design and functions just as it's intended to. Out of ammo, baby! The Romeo MSR on its own is a great choice for a first red dot. And if you want the extra functionality of a magnifier, you can still get the combo for just over 200 bucks. Middle school essays taught me to never say in conclusion, so instead I'll say, you are the only person out there who is you. Products are made with many combinations of features, but the end result is absolute. So you'll have to choose the one that offers what closest aligns with who you are. I'm a big fan of shooting the arrowhead, 
and if it only gets bigger and better from here, then I imagine I'll love shooting higher tier LPVOs in the future. And for as much as it seems I've crapped on it, if you put the Romeo MSR plus Juliet 3 micro combo in my hands, it would serve me well. If not, with a little bit of neck pain afterwards.